Hello everybody, it's here to you, and welcome back to Let's Play Super Mario Odyssey. In the previous episode, this game peaked. It can't get any better than that. We already saw the Metro Kingdom, we already saw the Jump Up Superstar Festival, and we already saw the super adorable Shaverian race. This game's not going to get much better, except it's going to find ways, because knowing this game, it's never going to peak. In today's episode, we're we'll be continuing on through the Snow Kingdom and taking care of the last of the things we currently care about taking care of right now. Keyword, currently care about. Now, there are going to be things that we can take care of right now that we are going to be focusing on, but we are going to be taking care of stuff that I feel like doing. For example, over in the northern part, we go over here, and it's Captain Toad! And I would have loved to have had, like, a Captain Toad Shaverian race in the Treasure Tracker my Odyssey content thing. That would've been fun, but unfortunately that didn't happen. It was so cold, I had to find some shelter, but I got buried in the snow. Luckily, I found a power moon in there. Enjoy! And that was completely a wrong voice, but my throat is kind of bothering me today, so I can't do my usual toad voice for prolonged times of period. That was backwards, and I don't care. There's a moon rock over here. That's pretty interesting indeed, and there's going to be a hat door. Hey dude, you up for a challenge? Everyone loves walking. Problem is, most people don't take it seriously. That's what trace walking is all about. If you can walk like a champ, you'll win a prize. Sweet. The rules are cake. Just walk around and follow on the ground. Here's the fun part though. The arrows disappear after a bit. You gotta score 80 points or more to win. Alright, same trick as before that we used for the... Um, Similar trace walking technique during the Sand Kingdom. Remember the landmarks. Remember the landmarks and you'll be able to conquer your destiny. So, for example, I remembered somewhere around here was where this point ended. And then we can look at a straight line. A little bit further than that, actually. And we can continue on our merry way. Focus on the arrows, not me. My voice is deep and sexy. This is exactly how I'll be voiced in the Maya movie. You need 80 points or more to win. Think you've done it? You scored 82 points. The walk was serious business. Boom! This power moon is yours. Oh, that was a pretty fun one. I honestly don't know why I gave him, like, a super deep voice like that. But, anywho. Now we go over here, there are going to be some penguins! Oh, oh, we scared them away. Well, considering how we dropped them off the cliff every five seconds in Mario 64. Can't say I entirely blame them. Apparently through hacking, you can actually drop the mother penguin off the cliff too. I just think that's the funniest thing ever. Might be incredibly morbid, but I find morbid things funny. Alright, so let's head over here. Alright, and what else can we do over here? Right, there's gonna be this guy. So, like before in the Sand Kingdom, seeing a lot of similarities between this and the Sand Kingdom, apparently. So, we can go around here and same rows. Before, we're going to want to have the fish follow us. Here we go, man. Come on, 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 yeah! First try! It wasn't that hard. I always think of the fish mini game from Wii Play whenever I see something like this. Does anybody remember that one? I remember thinking that was like one of the more fun ones in We Blame. Like that was the ones the ones that I'd replay through the most. That and the one with the cow. That one was a lot of fun. Bunny Rabbit! Bunny Rabbit! Bunny Rabbit! Bunny Rabbit! Bunny Rabbit! Bunny Rabbit! 
All right, so this just proves my theory earlier that these bunny rabbits don't spawn until you come back to the kingdom later. So, yeah, we got a bunny rabbit! Oh, he's a cute little bunny rabbit! Bunny rabbits are adorable! I love bunny rabbits! All right, so... Now we're taking care of all that. We're in the video. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I always love doing that. It's always one of my favorite things to do, to do like a fake outro and things like that. Uh, that's, that's always a fun time. Um, so up here, I remember this one giving me the most trouble of all these levels on my first playthrough of the game. This is another one of the ones where that ad boards are difficult. This was another one of those uh, power moons where I couldn't figure it out until like the post game or something like that. Uh, so I keep talking about the post game a lot, but we haven't actually mm, seen the post game. I probably shouldn't stop doing that because, well. The post game is kind of cool in this game, and I don't want to spoil all of it, but I kind of already did by mentioning the fact that there is a post game. But I'm gonna keep mentioning it because this is my channel and I can do whatever I want. So there's gonna be moon shards throughout the level, but the but the timestamp you'll see for that is really only gonna be focusing on when we actually get the power moon itself. So. I don't know how I'm going to do that for the video. I might do like a little highlight clip thingy uh, showcasing where they all are when we get to the power moon. I might do something like that. That's probably what I'll do. Alright, so this one could be a little bit annoying to deal with. So basically what you want to do is you want to have the typhoon guy go up there. I don't think this one can actually go that much higher though. Well, maybe we can with... No, I don't have the patience for that. <laughs> I'll be honest, this is actually one of my least favorite captures in the game. He's just so slow! I mean, yeah, it's kind of cool and all that they can fly around and things like that, but there's, like, other better flying captures in this game. And your blowing mechanic isn't even all that good to begin with. So, yeah, these guys, I gotta say, this is, like, the first capture in the game where I'm honestly not really that big of a fan of it. I do find their name amusing, though. Typhoon. It is pretty clever. It makes me think of Typhoon Lagoon, which is the best uh, Disney water park, and I don't care what anyone says. And this is what you want to do to achieve your destiny. Like that, and blow it towards the other side. I remember thinking that you had to do like some kind of unnecessary difficult... Oh! Oh, this is a different thing. Huh. Well, this is awkward. <laughs> Well, I guess I now I have to talk about this because uh, it's on screen and I can't avoid that. So, these are paintings that take you to different kingdoms. Here's the thing. We're ignoring them. We've been ignoring them, but I haven't really talked about them before. The reason why we're ignoring them is because later in the Let's Play, we're going to have a dedicated video showcasing all the paintings. Similar to how we're doing Korok Seeds and things like that for Breath of the Wild. Because I think that's going to be a lot more easy for people to keep track of for using this as a walkthrough. So that's my current mindset. We'll be doing the, we'll be taking care of all of them later in the game. I'm not gonna be doing that right now. Man, that was like that was brutal right there. Capturing your buddy and then using that body to murder the other buddy. That is, that is gross. That is morbid. Down here we got some more regional coins. There's like 20 left for us to find, so we'll probably find the rest of them pretty easily. We got another one of those moon shard thingies down there, so that's going to be pretty fun. And we have another hat door that we haven't opened yet, because this one's covered in snow. Is there anything up here? No, there isn't. Okay. So we got over here now. Oh, okay, this one. This is a cool one. I love the effect of the frost covering the camera, the lens of the camera. That's such a good detail. So what you want to do is that you want to use the super amazing powers of uh, throwing the hat onto the flower so that we can continuously keep running on water because we're epic and amazing and the laws of physics don't apply to us because we are sexy.
alright, yeah, we only needed two of them, so that wasn't too bad. It makes me think of that one level in Super Mario Galaxy when you use Yoshi to get on top of the thing. Getting here is a good job. You really are something. Wait, what did you say? You really are the something. <laughs> oh yeah, Javarians, I love you so much, you're so cute. We're not just any something, we're THE something. Eh, dokie then. So, what haven't we done yet? We have not licked the Tokyo Tower. That's one goal of knife that I have, but that's not really relevant to what we're talking about today. I have licked the Eiffel Tower, but not the Tokyo Tower. I would like to someday, though. So we head over here, and now we can collect some more coins. We're getting pretty close to the end of that, so I don't think we're going to have to worry too much about getting the rest of them. It's not going to be like a super grand montage or anything like that when we do inevitably have to do that. Over here is going to be a scarecrow. This is underneath the archway towards the beginning of the level with the Odyssey. So we head over here. Owie, that hit my brain all. Shake, 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 we're not gonna make it. Well, no, we're not gonna make it. We're not gonna make it, cause we suck. It's over here. Climb, 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 climb. How much faster would that actually let you climb in real life? Cause another trick with climbing a pole and things like that is to keep, like, all your limbs on the thing. Uh, so that... Like, you have as much body strength supporting you as possible. Because, like, believe it or not, your legs are actually, like, a really important part of keeping you, like, sturdy and stuff like that when you're climbing a rope and poles and stuff. Okay, so there's this thing over here. Ah, boy. Ah, boy. Ah, boy. Ah, boy. Oh, no. Oh no, that is not my favorite flavor of tuna. Nothing is my favorite flavor of tuna because I don't actually like tuna. James, if you're watching this, add it to the list. <laughs> so, we head over here. Is there two power moves in this area or is it just the one? That's the $3 question that I'd like to ask my secretary. If I had one. If it had three dollars. <laughs> Can you imagine having a secretary, like, actually, like, an actual paid person helping you, but you don't have three dollars for yourself? How, how, how would that even work? Alright, so let's up here. I did not think that was going to work, but then it did, and now we're awesome. Alright, is there anything up here? Yes, there is. I knew it. I knew it. That Mulan was a troublemaker from the start. Don't look at me. She gets from your side of the family. She's just trying to help her father. I don't know the rest of it. <laughs> my sister has that memorized, but I'm not my sister. I'm not that, I'm not that cool. So, we head over here. Ah, there's a pole right there, which indicates that there is more to this level than meets the eye. It's over here, go over this way, and collect our sweet, sweet wood. It was quite amazing indeed. It required all of the effort, and it would not be in vain, because we're going to murder those Goombas. And now we're over here, we can collect our next reward. The Power Moon! Yay! Jump and swim in the freezing water! This is another reason why I don't like these Taifu guys, because when you try to throw your hat at them, but your timing is off, they blow away your hat. I don't like that. It, it's not it's not very friendly. But now that we have this guy, we can go over here and blow away this block and activate another hat door. Another door? Oh! Oh, this one is cool. I really like this level. 
So we go over here. What we want to do is I want to use the Typhoon to figure out how to move these to match the shape. So it's actually going to be that difficult. It's just more so figuring out how you want it to work in the first place. But if you go like that, I don't think you can cheat this by um, doing a thing. Because the thing that you're supposed to do is like filling all the blocks, but there's a barrier in the way. So if you don't do it completely, then it ruins everything. But this isn't that difficult of a puzzle, so we'll be fine. Don't worry about the future, it's alright. I don't know the rest of the lyrics, but this song is catchy and I wanna play Xenoblade X. Okay, blowing and sliding. Is there another one in this area? It doesn't appear so. So, now it's going to be our regularly scheduled looking over the notes that I wrote with my bare hands and my feet on one day. Actually, it's not true. That's gross. Shiny! Yay! Woohoo! You'll see a clip on screen! And I sound quieter because I'm leaning further back in my chair. And now we're we'll going over in this direction, and this level is pretty interesting because we get to we've seen these uh, wind geyser mechanics earlier in the game, but now we actually get to experiment more with them. It's really cool. I really like this one. So we get to fly around like a little pretty ballerina. Maybe now you'll reconsider announcing Mario Ballet. <laughs> I always loved that gag on that E3 year. I wish Nintendo did more of those because those are really funny. So we get over here, but there's going to be another path over there, which means there's going to be another power moon. And that's going to be pretty fun. So it's over here, and be very careful towards the rest of this because I just now I'm going to mess something up. All right, be careful. That will be fine. We'll be fine. It's all going to be fine and dandy. What are you worried about? Alright, with all that taken care of, there's only really like one or two more power moons left for us to find, and then there's regional coins. So now we'll be heading down here. I believe we got. <laughs> that looked really funny. So I believe there's like only really two power moons that now that I actually really care about. The first one's gonna require a change of outfit though. Assuming, of course, we actually have this outfit. I don't know if we do. Oh, we do. That's cool. Alright, so there's gonna be a Trevarian somewhere around here. <laughs> I 
What is our racing uniform? The only uniform, uh, the only uniform that counts. Nothing but undies. Wow, only a serious tough guy would brave this coat of nothing but undies. You're a real beast. Please take this. I mean, if Laura Croft has anything to go by, then you're not wrong, considering the first game she was literally climbing like snowy mountains and shorts. I always find it funny when, like, you're in a game and things like that, and you wear, like, the armor like that in a snowy environment where, like, you probably die in two seconds if you actually try doing something like that. I always find that pretty amusing. I especially love in Xenoblade 2 how they actually explain how, like, characters like Zeke and Pyra are okay. Um, I have to, I have to keep this guy doing it. Uh, they're, they're, like, okay being in the snow and things like that. Anybody who's played the game already knows the cutscene I'm talking about. It's one of my favorites in the entire game. I believe that it's a business as usual on the racing front. The grand prize for this race is a power moon. Now, do you want to race or do you want to race? Well, it doesn't really look like I have an option. Okay, I got a word right there towards the end. <laughs> Alright, I think we did. That wasn't too bad. This wasn't a fluke, you're the real deal. Take this power moon. <laughs> Alright, so... Yeah, this is the power moon that everyone struggles with in this game, and I don't know why. It's literally the exact same thing as before. The track isn't different. The races are a little better, I guess, but it's literally the same thing, so... Like, I literally don't know why so many people have struggled with that one. It's like the Great Bay Temple in Majora's Mask. I legit don't understand how so many people get confused in that dungeon. You literally go into the sander, go down one room at a time, and then you reverse the gurney and do the same thing. We did it! We got the last of the regional coins! Yay! Alright, that took a little while longer than I care to admit. <laughs> but, we did it. And now that we got all the regional coins, we can actually go into the Crazy Cap shop and get the souvenirs! Yay! So, we'll be going over there. And I guess we're gonna stretch out this video just a little bit longer, because now that we can do that, we can take care of that one power moon that we skipped earlier. So, that's gonna be pretty fun. Oh my god, I forgot about that. There, there's Shaverian nesting dolls. Oh, oh my god, 
is so cute. And I still love how their sleeves are too big for them. Alright, so now we take care of that, there's going to be one more power movie taken care of. So this video may be a little bit longer than I initially planned, but it's going to be okay because that means we get to listen to this amazing music again. I think it's a very in theme. We haven't really had a chance to really talk about it that much, but this is actually one of my favorite songs in the entire game. So, yeah, that's pretty fun. <laughs> The Shavarian town theme, the music that plays in the ice caverns and things like that. Those are like two of my favorite songs in the entire game. I don't think anything beats Jump Up Superstar, but those are like my those are like three of my favorite songs in the game. So that's pretty fun. Over here is gonna be another one of those levels where there's gonna be the moon shards and things like that, and we're we'll going across the 8-bit wall. And this area is just so cool. Probably could say to say that about an area where it's like icy and things like that, but I don't care. Cliche is my middle name. Hope you won't think it's cliche if I go new today. Don't call the cops now, baby. I perform this way. <laughs> it's my favorite Weird Al lyrics. <laughs> all right, so hopefully we don't have to do all that horrible stuff again. It looks like it saved the moon shard progress, so that's pretty good. We probably should have been a little bit more careful about not being dead. Because practicing being alive is always a good pastime. It's one of my favorite hobbies outside of gaming, honestly. Just being alive is a, pr it's a pretty good way to live. There we go. Now we're using the smart part of our brain hole. And that is the last power moon that we care about in the Snow Kingdom. There are a couple other ones. I didn't mean to show it yet, but there are those painting power moons that we probably could have got started on a long time ago, but I honestly think it's just a little bit better to wait on that for a little bit longer. I swear it makes, I swear it makes sense in some way. Even though we can't grab them right now, I just think it would be a bit more convenient in terms of structuring this as a walkthrough to wait until a little bit later. So thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Super Mario Odyssey. In the next episode, we'll be moving on to a whole new kingdom. So thank you guys so much for watching this video, and next time, we'd gear to you. Oh yeah.